Okay, so now we're going to look at your genetics problem packet, and if you want a little help getting you started, that's what this video is all about. So, get your packet. It's called Genetics Problems. All right. Genetics Problems. Read the problem, underline or highlight the important things. Uh, it says, I'm going to zoom in. I'm sorry, I know you can't read it really well, so I'll get as close as I can. Gregor Mendel crossed a homozygous dominant tall pea plant. That's all very important. With a homozygous dwarf, I'm sorry, homozygous recessive dwarf pea plant. Given that the gene for tall is big T, can't read that, but that's what that says. Tall is big T, and the gene for dwarf is little t. Answer the following. All right, I always like to start with my key. So, big, 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 little, little, little. Please do a three-part key for all of your genetics problems, no matter what. Um, the phenotype here will be tall. Big T, little t will be tall. Little t, little t is dwarf. Okay, now you go ahead and uh, look at the rest here. So what are the genotypes of the parents? Well, it says homozygous dominant tall. That would be this one, homo tall. So I put down one parent there, big T, big T, big T, with homozygous recessive dwarf is little t, little t. So we're going to put little t, little t. What kind of gametes can they produce? Separate this gene pair. Put a big T in one sex cell, a big T in the other sex cell. Put a little t in one sex cell and a little t in the other sex cell. Okay, So this parent can make these kinds of sex cells. The other parent can make this kind of sex cell. I often get the question, how do you know which one's mom and which one's dad? We don't. They didn't tell us. And um, in this kind of problem, it doesn't matter. I could have put little t, little t here, and I could have put big T, big T over here. All right, set up our Punnett square. Again, make your square nice and big enough so I don't have to squint. Put our sex cells. I like to make them really big so I can read what's in them. Um, my egg cells are little t, little t. My sperm cells are big T, big T. All right, join all of those sex cells. Bring one in, one down, big T, little t. Next one, same thing. These two sperm and sperm and egg sperm and egg. All of our offspring are heterozygous for their genotype. All of our offspring are tall. So our genotypic ratio, I'm going to give a percent. 100 percent of the offspring have the genotype big T, little t. Phenotypic ratio, what do they, what do our offspring look like? 100 percent of our offspring are tall. Now the next problem says the offspring from problem one are called the F1 generation. So these are your offspring from the first cross. This is called the F1 generation. Cross two of the offspring from the F1 generation in problem one. So that's what I need to do for problem two. Take two of these offspring and cross them. Notice that they're all heterozygous. It doesn't matter which two I pick. So, um, my key again, big, 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 little, little, little. Do that like clockwork. Okay, now I'm going to do the genotypes of my parents. I got this one from up here, and I'm going to get the other one from up there. All of the offspring are big T, little t. That's why we're doing this problem this way. What kind of gametes can they make? Big T gametes, little t gametes. Big T gametes, little t gametes. Make your Punnett square. Again, I always put the eggs up here and the sperm over here. But you can move them. You can put the sperm up here and the eggs over here. All right. So now, join these egg and sperm together, homozygous dominant, heterozygous, heterozygous, 
homo recessive. What are the genotypic ratio? What is the genotypic ratio for the offspring? So the genotypic ratio for the offspring, I have one of these, I have two of these, and I have one of these. All right, and I like to put them in that order because you're going to see patterns uh, in genetics if you do that. What do you mean by order? Well, I'm looking at my key, and I've got my key listed as homo dominant, hetero, homo recessive. If I keep my ratios in this order, um, list them in that order if you have them, you're going to see some patterns. All right, so my genotypic ratio, I'm going to give, um, I'm going to do this one in numbers this time. Okay, you can do percents, but this time I'm going to do numbers, and sometimes it's just nice to switch it up. So I have one of these, one, big, big, to two, big, little, to one, little, little. All right? Now, don't give any more information than that. Don't mix it up. They just want genotypes. So just give genotypes and how many. Phenotypic ratio, you just want to give phenotypic information. So I've got uh, tall, 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 dwarf. Three tall to one dwarf. All right, and that is how you do genetics problems. Don't give any more or any less information in this. Don't start telling me three tall uh, I don't know. Some people start trying to tell me whether it's heterozygous or homozygous. Don't do that. They just want phenotypic information. They just want to know what do they look like. Genotypic ratio. Don't tell me anything about tall or short in that because this is genotypes. All right. That's it. Good luck.